Hello, I'm Bill Harris. Welcome to Life Questions. Our program focuses on your questions about life, questions that you, our viewers, have sent us for answers. Well, we have the answers today through a local group who is devoted to spreading the good word of God and making him known among mankind. Our guests today include Dale Ann Ross of Remnant Worship, along with Jody Mears, also of Remnant Worship. We also have Reverend Mark Bird of Revive Ohio with his state outreach. And we're rounding up our panel today with Dr. Josh Steinke of Steinke Family Chiropractic and Worship Anyway. Happy to have you all with us today. Thanks for having us, Phil. Now, one of our viewer questions that we got that came in today says, how difficult is it to combine a non-ministry-related related vocation and a ministry calling? You know, I guess sort of like what I mentioned earlier, Joseph the carpenter, uh, he went into ministry by ushering in the Son of God into this world. That was a ministry that opened up everything, didn't it? Yes. How, how is it? that we can combine our local vocations if we're not ministers to begin with. That, that, that excludes you, Pastor Mark. <laughs> 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 but you can still speak. <laughs> Thank you. No, we, how, how is it we can combine those two? In, with, with you being a chiropractor, what would you say? Sure. You know, uh, the question's kind of like, how difficult is it to combine the two? And that, I think, is in multiple parts, Bill. Sometimes it's difficult because of our position in a company or wherever our vocation is, right? If I'm a teacher at a public school, mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty is a little different than if I'm a private business owner like myself and, ha sure. and the boss says what goes, right? So <laughs> uh, I have to answer to my you know, boss, which is myself. It's a little easier than if I'm in a different position. So the difficulty can range in that. But I think the, the, the bigger hurdle difficulty isn't necessarily position for a lot of people. <clears throat> it is um, the... Uh, confidence or it, it is the uh, ability to actually communicate my faith with other people uh, in a way that is not only um, effective right so I can communicate so people will you know understand it or whatever but that is also you know spirit-led so it's powerful right where there's there's actual you know fruit that's coming from that and so those two things are the two biggest hurdles I think so it can be very difficult um, if both of those are a hurdle for me, if I'm in a position that I can't necessarily talk about my faith openly without being maybe in, getting in trouble or chastised or you know putting my job on the line, mm -hmm. but also if I'm not very confident in the word or if I'm not really being, if I'm not, I don't know, other than saying not led by the Holy Spirit to have you know that um, that authority to speak about Jesus in in my life and what He's done for me, but the. The other side of that, if we can, um, if we can overcome those two hurdles, right? It's probably the most powerful place to talk about Jesus, right? In our vocational setting, because there are so many people, right? For us, um, a lot of people. I've had people in my office who travel the world. You know, we've had people that do marketing for us, and they they're from different states, and they travel all over, and they're in churches and big ministries, and. Uh, you know, that, that different a world like that. And they'll come into our office and they've literally said these words and uh, I'm very humbled by them. They'll say, there's more ministry happening in the four walls of this little chiropractic office than I've seen in some mega churches. Wow. And I don't say that to say, look at us. I, I was very humbled by that. Like, wow, you really think so? Uh, and the reality isn't because we're better than anything else. It's because if we allow God to just use us mm -hmm. as his hands and feet, mm -hmm. He'll figure out a way for us to be able to speak about Jesus, mm -hmm. even if we're not necessarily allowed to, right? Mm -hmm. And that, not, not just in an office where I'm the boss and can, can say what people are allowed to talk about, but he'll give us opportunities and he'll make a way for us to be able to do that. But also, if, if I'm personally uh, walking daily uh, in my word and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide and lead me in discernment and wisdom and all those things, he'll not only give me the words to say, but I'll have a power to say those oh, things right yes. from on high and then it becomes you know life-changing it becomes mm -hmm. impactful and uh, we get to uh, influence and I think that's the number one word in a in a vocation setting we have the opportunity to influence for the for the kingdom right. in a way that we don't always on Sunday mornings in churches because some people won't come there right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. and it's literally us going to them right in those vocational settings Probably the number one thing, though, when I talk to other, let's say, chiropractors, business owners, they're so fearful that it's going to 
lose them business, mm. right? And, and so uh, if I had two, you know, two pieces of advice necessarily in that regard as a fellow business owner and doctor and those kind of things, it's that there is never a dollar amount in my business that will ever be worth the souls that are won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's excellent. And so it's so worth it to, you know, set that aside. And not only that, beyond that, God has taken care of us every step of the way, right? He yes. has provided for us because we are just obedient in his hands and feet, you know? Amen. Amen. Thank you. How about you? Wow. Well, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and so I can kind of take a different take on this. I think it's so important for people who are in ministry to be the same when they're outside doing ministry for others than when they are in the home. And I've not always been the best at that at times, um, but I believe that um, being a stay-at-home mom is a huge ministry. And um, and God really had to awaken me to that. I have a four-year-old little girl. Mm. Um, but you know, even even for mamas that are stay at home, um, I just want them to be seen and known that that is their ministry. Mm. Yeah. And it's a it's it's, it's a, a huge ministry. and powerful ministry. Yes. Um, and God will meet you right there, washing the dishes and washing the clothes <laughs> and 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 you know training them up in the way they should go. Um, because it is it is. A number, my number one most important ministry call. Mm. I used to um, do hair for 15 years. I was a hairstylist, and it was really cool how you could right in the chair minister to people. Sure. But I think one of the best things we can minister to people when we're when we're kind of um, you know vacillating between you know being in ministry and then also being in a vocation is our character, our integrity, and how we're we're representing Jesus outside of our ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, It's all ministry and people are watching us. And so your attitude and the way you handle things with integrity and character is probably one of the most things you can do to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Judy? You know, I've went through the transition of being the, um, in in a vocation, the Lord calling me to ministry blending the two and now he's just recently made me go into ministry full time so i've had all like all the aspects you could possibly think of there but i was so blessed when i was in a a, uh, you know a non-ministry vocation i worked with all believers some at different levels but god used that that five-year season um to really train me for what he was going to he's brought me into now um and it was just so powerful i have so many different testimonies through that but one of the things i remember was we had a client, I was, a, I was an endodontic assistant, dental assistant. We had a client who, or a, a patient who was um, under sedation and was starting to have kind of a panic attack. And I can remember underneath my breath, just praying over them. And when they came to, sh- she looked at me and said, were you praying for me? And it was, I mean, it kind of took me aback for a moment because I was not praying loud at all. I just was very quietly whispering underneath my breath. And it, even while she was having that moment, she could hear my prayers. And so I just felt like that was such a powerful moment that God had really shown me that I can use you in all different kinds of ways. Sure. It doesn't have to be like this square box of what you think preaching the gospel to someone in your in your vocation may look like because of, you know, different reasons, but he used me and that's just one of the so many testimonies that I have. But now I'm in full-time ministry. And that is my vocation at this point. Mm-hmm. So, so I've been on every aspect of it. And he's, he's beautifully moved me through those transitions and used both of them at the same time. Excellent. Move on to you now, uh, full-time so, ministry, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, not always. For 30 plus years, I was a bivocational minister, okay? For 30 plus years, I was in sales. But here's the thing. Uh, Jesus spoke to his disciples and it's commonly referred to as the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter five. Mm-hmm. And he's speaking to his disciples specifically. Okay. And he looks at them and he says, you know, you're the soul of the earth in verse 13. And he says that in verse 14, you are the light of the world. Yes. Right. And he says this, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. It really plays off of what Dale Ann shared, but like he's talking to them and he doesn't say, do this when you're in the pulpit. Yes. Yeah, come on. Were the disciples in the pulpit? No. Oh, no. They probably weren't, right? right? But he's saying, you're gonna be salt mm-hmm. wherever you go. Yeah. And it takes me to Acts 1.8, and I'll wrap up with this, Bill. Acts 1.8 said, you shall be my witnesses. Mm-hmm. 
used to be, I used to go witnessing years ago. When I did street ministry years ago, I used to go witnessing as an event. Mm -hmm. But I started realizing that Jesus was saying, we're to be a witness, we're to be salt, we're to be light. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think it matters if we're working in a job or a tent making or, <laughs> you know, the stay at home mom, the song that we all know, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Everybody knows that song was written by a housewife while doing the dishes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So we're supposed to be salt and light everywhere mm. we go. Now I know why that's my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's terrific. Well, you know, for somebody in the audience that may be encouraged about what you've had to say here, how easy or how difficult is it to make a transition? I mean, even though you're a stay-at-home mom, I'm not saying you leave home to evangelize now, but how do you make the transition from just that, being the stay-at-home mom, to witnessing even to your daughter and to witnessing to other children that may come over, to witnessing to adults and the like, to learn that even though you are not in a full-time, you know, quote-unquote ministry, you can still shift into ministry from where you are. How, how do you do that? It's, a, it's knowing your identity mm -hmm. <laughs> in Christ Jesus and knowing that it doesn't change just because your location or where you minister changes. And to be honest with you, that had to be a revelation to me. Yeah. Um, it was sometimes difficult switching. I love, loved the downtown ministry that we did. I loved doing that. But then switching to home, sometimes the enemy would try to fight me. Let's be real. He would fight me saying, you're not doing enough. Or, you know, he'll even do that in ministry where you're not doing enough and, and, and try to get me distracted from the very most important thing, which is sure. to show my daughter Jesus every mm -hmm. single day mm -hmm. and my attitudes and the way I'm disciplining her, the way I'm training her. And, um, and that was a hard shift at times. Sometimes I would come from downtown and enjoy that because you, you, you were talking about at the other show is that there's fruit in it, right? Mm -hmm. But my four-year-old doesn't always show fruit, right? away mm -hmm. that is a long <laughs> it is a marathon it's not a yes, it's not yes. a quick and we're such yeah. a, we're we're so acclimated to this uh you know fast food service and things quick 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 and you want to see the result of it but i don't see the result in my four-year-old that quick i really don't <laughs> and it's going to be a long haul of sure, training her sure. in the ways of the lord in order to see the fruit that will be yeah come come later on and so it wasn't always easy and I won't I won't say it is easy to shift into it but as long as I behold my Savior as long as I keep my eyes on my Savior and just live out my life and my relationship with Jesus in front of her I believe it makes it a lot easier and takes the pressure off <laughs> you said it earlier though you said uh, to be the same always right mm -hmm. whether you're at home same. or you know, what it, and I think that's the that is the, the is the most important answer really it's the only way to do it is to just always be the same yes. right i'm not dr josh today and pastor josh tomorrow right <laughs> uh, i'm not i'm not worship leader josh on saturday and and dr josh on monday although i have people call me those things i'm still the same person right yes. i still talk the same i still act the same behind the scenes with my kids even more importantly yeah. right the number one thing that i've seen destroy people who were pastors kids was that they're Yep. Parents were two different people on yep. Sunday versus the rest of the week yep. or at home. And it's difficult, right? Because our kids somehow push those buttons that, <laughs> we, <laughs> that, that other people can't, right? Like, you, like, like a lot of people can say things to me about, you know, what we do in ministry because they don't agree with it or they're not believers. And it doesn't bother me one bit, right? I shake it off and move on and it doesn't bother me. But my kids look at me wrong and I get all worked up, you know, yeah, and sure. probably more than worked up sometimes. And so... I think that there's grace in that, but yeah. our heart always being the same, yeah. never changing. And so it's not like, oh, I have to shift it into gear today. Right. Like I'm going into room number two, I have to shift it into Pastor Josh because somebody just lost a, a loved one. And mm. I'm just going to be that same person every time. And it gives me the opportunity when we're that way, the world, especially the non-believers, it's such a more, uh, we have such a bigger opportunity and then to speak into their lives because they, they see that more than anybody else, right? Yeah. They're like, this guy, I've been watching him and he's never any different, right? He's yeah, not yeah. this guy here and that yeah, guy there. Yeah. And so I don't, have to, I don't have to turn it on, vocation today, ministry right. tomorrow, yeah. right? It's just always the same. Always authentic. It, it's, it's be a witness, right. be that, yeah. be that. Not, not go and do that and you're shifting, it's be a witness. Yeah. I'm gonna get a shirt made. I'm saying, be a <laughs> yeah, wherever you are, be a witness. Right. Be a witness yeah, right. at home, yeah. 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 
Jody, you know, you're, you're, you're leaving right after the taping of this show, going down to uh, Fort Myers, Florida, mm -hmm. to help those who uh, have been ravaged by the Hurricane Ian. Yeah. Ian. I, Ian? Ian, 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 yeah. Ian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what do you have to say about that kind of a shift? That you're making in well, your life. it really coincides with what they're saying. I don't. I'm not going to be anybody differently when I go down there. I'm going to be Jody. Um, mm -hmm. I really think it's important sometimes to strip away titles. I really, really do, um, because for me, I don't. I mean, I wear a lot of different hats in ministry. Sometimes I'm a preacher. Sometimes I can have more of an ap apostolic type of anointing. Sometimes I'm a worship leader. Sometimes I'm the girl digging, pulling the food out of the the crock pot and putting it on somebody's plate. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just feel like I'm just going to go be who God called me to be. We're all children of God. Right. So I'm just a child of God and I'm just going to go do what he asked me to do. And whether that's, you know, put muck boots on and throw dead fish out of somebody's house. Yeah. I mean, truly, yeah. I mean, we're going to walk into some really brutal territories oh, that have yeah. been ravaged. And so I don't see it any differently than if I get cleaned up you know, on another night and I go inside of a shelter and I sing worship music. Um, yeah. I'll just wear all the hats because that's, I just want to be all that Jesus wants me to be. And yeah. to me, when you put a title on something, it really restricts what that, what, what that can make other people think, not necessarily what, who we are, but you know, when you hear the word pastor, you only, people can tend to just think that particular, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, definition yeah. or worship leader, you know, oh, I didn't know you did all this other stuff. Well, I'm not just a worship leader, you know? Right. So I just feel like it's important to strip away title. I'm Jody and um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to get my hands dirty and do whatever if you need me to, you know, I mean, we're literally going to put portable toilets together yeah. and so there's dirty work that needs to be done and I'm willing oh, to yes, do it. And I feel yes. like a title just can sometimes really miss um, construe that. Yeah. So I don't think I want to caution you. Just watch out for the alligators that maybe. Yes, around. I've already been <laughs> cautioned that and <laughs> sharks in the water, <laughs> all hey, this you stuff. Have so. dominion over yes, 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 that's what the word says. So. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you have to say about such well, a transition? The only thing I'll say on top of that is, uh, first of all, Jesus said, uh, when we stand before Him, He's going to say to those who have done what He's called and ask us to do. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. 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 And you know, Bill, I'll say this. I want to wrap up with this in this topic. Um, when I minister to people on the streets, homeless people, pe drug addicts and all that on the street, mm -hmm. not one single person has ever asked me for my title. Come on. Come on. Mm. See they don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't really care what my title is. Mm -hmm. They just want to know if I have something to help them. Yes. Amen. Very well put. And on that note, we're going to take a break. Sure. Uh, we'll be back hopefully with more good wisdom for you right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Well, thank you for staying with us, and we've got some more interesting stuff for you. Look at this here, a question that one of you, our viewers, sent us here. Um, Pew Research Trends are suggesting that 90, or rather 31%, pardon me, 31% of Christians will become religiously unaffiliated before they turn age 30. How can we combat this statistic? I'm talking about young people here, about 31% um, are, are going to begin to come, become religiously unaffiliated by age 30. Anything we can do to refute that? Well, Bill, I'll tell you, because uh, I research this a lot, um, just in Ohio itself, uh, there are 11.68 million people, okay? Mm -hmm. And when the U.S. government sends out a census, according to the last census that was sent out, they have one question on there that says, do you have a church affiliation? Mm -hmm. that's, all the, that's all the question answers. And uh, I would have you guess uh, what percentage of Ohioans say that they have a church affiliation and the percentage that don't. And I can tell you, uh, shockingly, probably less than 
40% have a church affiliation. Hmm. And that speaks to this. But here's what I believe is happening, right? I believe that the reason that young people are being turned off by church is because there's two things that they don't see. Number one, they don't see love and they don't see any power. That's it. And so remarkably, the last three cities in a row that we've been to, we've met people that are into the occult, into witchcraft, into black magic, and mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. they'll call it white magic. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they tell <laughs> us that they're into it is because they get to experience power mm -hmm. and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So what I believe sometimes the church in Ohio, and this is where my mission field is right now, and I believe what they're experiencing is, well, if you will look like us, talk like us, and act like us, then you can belong. Wow. Oh, wow. And they're saying, I don't look like you, I don't talk like you, and I don't want to act like you. And so I need to keep looking for power, but there's an absence really of love is what mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that's missing yeah. today. That's that, that sums it up. Jesus talked about love in that, in that fashion. They, they will know you by your love. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Doc? Yeah, I think this is uh, a lot of my uh, personal testimony with how I became uh, something different than the way necessarily that I was raised, right? Raised in a church um, all my life, which was, um, I'm very thankful for to go to church every Sunday. But by the time I became a uh, a college student, right? It moved away from home, and this is right here under the age of 30, what it's talking about, right? I, I went to church all my life, parents took me, which is good, but never having a relationship with the Savior myself, mm -hmm. right? Just attending on Sundays to mm -hmm. like something that was just a social club to me, right? Mm -hmm. That I didn't even really like that much um, because they told me to do things I didn't want to do or act like things I didn't want to <laughs> act like or whatever it may be. Certainly the lack of power, if you would. Uh, so, but when I, by the time you leave home or get outside of the house, then you just are left to whatever the world, you know, tells you is, mm -hmm. is good or where you feel love or acceptance, like Mark had said. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the thing that, me personally got to see was those kind of things Mark just touched on, but getting to see actual re something real, so real and so powerful. And so, uh, you know, that relationship thing um, that other people, I started seeing in some people that where we see realness and not just this, not just uh, do this and don't do that. Right? right. But people who would take their time to say, uh, hey, man, I see where you're at. I'll meet you where you're at. Mm -hmm. But hey, uh, if you watch me, there's a better way, right? And they didn't have to say those words, they just did it, right? And so I think what's really missing is relationship and mentorship and discipleship, and not the word discipleship like we say in the church, because I feel like that's so cliche, we don't even know what that means anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm saying doing life with people, mm -hmm. and doing life with young people, mm -hmm. and doing life with old people, and doing life with yeah, people, yeah. Just, just doing life with them to show them love and power, right? right. To show them, uh, just like Jesus did, to walk with them regardless of where they're at. And I think that's what's missing. But to do that, we can't just sit in, we can't just sit in the church on Sundays and say, come join us. There's yeah. nothing wrong with saying, come join us. But we can't just say, we can't post a Facebook you know, picture and say, come join us on Sundays mm -hmm. and make it seem like we're having a good time, right? And, and even if it is an awesome service and things, it's got to be relationship with people yeah, yeah. and then and this is what happens to us hey where do you go like where do you go to church you know that mm -hmm. starts to happen more and more often or or what's different about you and it's not just about where i go to church it's like what's different about you because they see something different in us yeah, right and we yeah. build a relationship with them it becomes more intimate doesn't it's it? exactly yeah. it. and i think that's what we need church yeah. is the body of christ uh -huh. it's a living organism yeah. it's yeah. moving yeah. and so we've put this box, these four walls up and called it church when it's outside of that. We go to church to get equipped. We go to church to, to get what we need to go out. Mm -hmm. As Matthew 28 says, go and make disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Disciples, meaning we take time. You talk about doing life with people. That's what we did with people down in the square. Is it fun? Not always. Is it messy? <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's, it, it can be, it can be, it, it can be difficult, but with Jesus, all things are possible. And it really is going neck and neck with these people. And, and 
linking arms and saying, I'm going to be your family because what people, another ab attribute that's missing is sonship and daughtership, mm -hmm. knowing that you belong to a family, mm -hmm. that you're not just a member of a church. You actually belong to a family, somebody that will get down in the ditches with you and get down in the dirt and help you. And part of that is the discipleship or relationship that you're talking about is doing life with people and being authentic, just being real. Yeah. They don't want yeah. a facade. <laughs> We'll let you round us off on that. Well, I, I also believe all that is so good. I also believe that the church needs deliverance and set free from the spirit of fear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because so many people are sitting in the, I find it odd that it's called pew research. So many people are sitting in the pews scared to death. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they afraid of? Scared to go into the dark places, which God called us to. Um, and and I, I feel like it's not, I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, but I, I just, it, then you kind of question, which is not my judgment, like, okay, what kind of relationship do you have with Jesus? Because you can't be in an intimate relationship with Jesus and not desire more and not desire to go share like the woman at the well. She organically, after Jesus touched her life, organically went and couldn't help but explode yes. with love. Yes. And yes. so it's time spent in the secret place with Jesus. As we spend time with him, we can't help for him to impregnate us with purpose. And that's others. That's mm -hmm. leading others and going to, into the dark places and knowing he's our protector and he's with us. And he gives angels charge over us to go in those dark places and to be able to look at those spirits and be able to say, no, not today. You will not ravage this person. And it's enough love and compassion for the person to say, oh my gosh, they're oppressed by demons and I have the answers. I can't sit by, not another day. I can't do it. So Lord, I'll fast, I'll pray, I'll do whatever it has to take. So power can, I can be a vessel of power through the power of Holy Spirit to be able to cast out demons, to be able to pray for these people and them see the demonstration of the kingdom. And when they do, they're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. And what does goodness do? It leads a man to repentance and it will bring these people that are bound by witchcraft and bound by these these uh, you know uh, bewitching spirits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so and so it's really the church coming to know their power in Christ Jesus truly and coming out of the spirit of fear and getting out of the pews. Wow that's good we'll, we'll have to end on that note we're all out of time but that uh, <laughs> that's more than just a mouthful it, it, it's all of what you're saying is very powerful and I certainly hope everybody's watching and listening so that we can engage those mm -hmm. those who are not engaging can be be uh, engaging yes. going yes. forward yes. that's what it's going to take us to engage with Christ engaged people didn't he Amen. he engaged them yes. yeah so true well thank you very much this week and for last week and all the wisdom you've shared with us and we certainly hope and pray that those in our audience have really been blessed and that you're going to Move out and do some engaging on your own, okay? <laughs> we'll be back again next week at the same time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.